Would the universe exist if nobody was around to experience it? To understand it? This may seem similar to the if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it make a sound example. And I want to bring light to that first. Most physicists and philosophers bump heads with this question due to the fact that many of them use a different definition for the word sound. In philosophy, sound is based on perception. It is only sound once it's been heard by something, where in physics, sound is specifically the vibrations that are made. They are sound regardless whether something perceives it or not. So who is right? Well, it's all based on which definition you use. But what about a different point of view? Say, like linguists and historians, what would they most likely side with? The English word for sound can be traced all the way back to the Latin word sonus, meaning a sound or a noise. But that word can be made into a verb being sono, which is to make a sound or a noise, or even sing. This seems to imply that that word was initially referring to the vibrations, what is made, not so much what is perceived. So it would seem the root to the word sound is specifically the vibrations, meaning that historians and linguists might side with physicists more often. But then again, I don't speak Latin, I speak English. So should I be using what the English dictionary says the definition to sound is? Well, if I do that and use the Oxford Dictionary, for example, they say that it's the vibrations and what is heard, meaning that it is only sound once it's perceived by the human brain, once it's registered. So that's what English would say the answer is. They would side with philosophy, most likely. And this brings up an interesting conflict about this question in general. You might actually get a completely different answer for this question and for the question of the video, depending on what language you speak. If you speak a different language that has a different definition, context, and reasoning behind whatever word you use for sound, you might have a completely different answer and it would be correct. So definitions define what the answer is. This is because humans make up words. We label what we understand and different experiences and logic can cause for completely different words describing similar things to be made. But what if you take humans out of the equation? Everything that has the possibility of knowing or understanding things what if you take them completely out of the equation? If there was absolutely nothing in the universe to experience it, to understand it, does it exist? Unlike the question over the tree, where you still have someone who understands what is a tree, what is sound, what is physics, what is possible, what if you remove the possibility for anything to understand it's real, if it exists? I'm going to approach this question in a unique way, using English itself as the medium. Having the questions depend specifically on the words we have crafted, two words in particular, existence and universe. For something to exist, it must have objective being or reality. For something to be objective, it does not rely on perspective or the mind for it to be true. Well, okay, that one was simple. Existence does not rely on something knowing about it, or so we have chosen in the English-speaking world. That said, the word universe is interestingly enough the conflict in this question. The definition of universe is all existing space and matter considered as a whole. Considered. For something to be considered, it must be carefully thought about. That would mean its existence would rely on something knowing about it. Okay, then let's try a different dictionary. The totality of known or supposed objects and phenomena throughout space. Hmm. For something to be known or supposed relies on humans or something else to think about it, to know about it. That's another problem. Okay, then let's try one last dictionary. The universe all of space and everything in it, including stars, planets, galaxies, etc. Hey, this one doesn't involve people. Uh, oh wait, a little further down, it says, the whole body of things and phenomena observed or postulated. Uh, for something to be observed or postulated, it relies on something being able to interact with it, understand it, 
know about it. It seems we've run into a problem, not with existence itself, but the very object we're trying to see would exist. By definition, the universe can only exist if it's understood, if something is there to understand it. Even other terminology, like cosmos for example, still relies on somebody knowing about it, interacting with it, understanding it. Yet existence is not dependent on anybody knowing about it. According to English, of course. So if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yes. It does everything that is required for a sound to be made except for me to be there. That's because English dictates that understanding. I know, for a fact, it will make the exact same sound whether I'm there or not. But the word sound limits my ability to express that. Would the universe exist if nobody was around to understand it? Yes, I logically know what we have labeled to be the universe would be there. But the very definition of the word universe limits that answer to a no. But I know logically it would. So what is the point of this video, this approach? I wanted to point out the problems that occur in language, and in this specific case, English. Many people all over the world fight over things, ranging in complexity, and it's almost always due to a misunderstanding in language. The totality of a word, what it once meant in contrast to what it now means, how it compares to what we actually know about how the real world works. This is an issue I almost never hear people talk about, and I think that's partly because we never consider it as a potential issue. This is why we run into issues involving race, marriage, scientific understandings, religion even. You name it and it most likely has a connection that can be related towards language. Many of us have the capability to understand things beyond what our language is limited to, yet some people don't. These are things I want to bring to attention. People justify misunderstandings and incorrect constructs because they limit themselves to specific words that aren't necessarily to par with what we actually understand. Our language is not expressive enough. It doesn't have enough vocabulary to express these different constructs. And I want to spend time over the next few years periodically making videos discussing these very problems. Because I feel they are heavily under the radar, and I believe that if we can bring attention to them, we might be able to see some change. So we either need some new words or some new reformed definitions. My question for you guys is, should we change or expand definitions? Should we make new words altogether? And or, should we make an effort to describe these very problems so that way people don't limit their understanding to what words don't necessarily accurately express? And with all that said, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Or thinking, in this case. Thanks for watching my whole video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. My last video discussed who has the ownership over English, which was meant to be a compliment to this video. This is a very important issue to me, and I hope to bring more attention to it by producing videos that discuss this issue, and hopefully it clears up a lot of misconceptions. So I want to thank you all for being a part of my channel, and hopefully we can all be a part of something that potentially could be huge. Take care.